everyone and welcome back to inside number 23, my little part of the interwebs which is all about knitting and sewing and generally living the craftiest life possible. My name, if you don't know, is Katie and you can find me pretty much everywhere on social media as Miss Lavelli, although if you want regular updates and that kind of thing I would very much recommend following me on Instagram as that's where I spend most of my time on the social medias. We also have a Ravelry group for this podcast which you can find just by heading over to Ravelry and searching inside number 23 in the groups tab and that will give you access to our group where you can get involved in things like knit-alongs and giveaways and all of that good stuff. And I'm coming to you as always from Hertfordshire which is just north of London in the UK where I live with my gorgeous pug puppy Rolly and my equally gorgeous husband Emrys and I am so happy to be back with you again this week for this our 70th episode. I'm a little bit overwhelmed by the fact that we've now done 70 episodes of this podcast and that's not, you know, including all of the additional vlogging videos and all of that type of thing that have been on here um, in the past kind of year and a bit, year and a half, I guess. So it's pretty exciting. I'm excited, if you can't tell by my general demeanour. Um, and it's, yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely to come and share a little bit of crafty time with you again this week. Thank you so much if you're a long-term viewer for bearing with me and coming back for another week and hello and welcome um, if this is your first week spending some time with me. Um, I hope my general excited kind of demeanour hasn't put you off at all. Um, I do have a lot of fun stuff to share with you this week. Before we get started with all of the uh, crafty stuff, I do have a couple of things that I want to talk of, about right off the bat. Um, the first is my content this week is a little bit all over the place, um, and that is because I managed at the beginning of this week to do something peculiar to my neck um, on the left side. I woke up on Monday of, of, of this week, just gone, um, and I couldn't move my head to the left at all. Um, and that has kind of continued over the past week I'm feeling considerably better now but one of the things that really was exacerbating it was unfortunately knitting. I have managed to do a little bit of knitting, um, I also did some knitting just yesterday, um, I went to visit Fibre East with my lovely friends Amy and Nikki and it was really really fun, took a little bit of knitting to do while I was there and woke up this morning and it was twinging again a little bit, nowhere near as bad as it was but um, so I've had to kind of take it easy on the knitting front which has obviously impacted my content somewhat but I do have some other fun things to share with you which is pretty exciting but yes that's what happened and thank you so much for all of your concerned well wishes about that but I am fully on the mend now and yay everything's cool everything's good um and yeah just needed a little bit a little bit of a rest and I am absolutely fine in terms of Fibre East, as I've brought that up already, um, I'm not actually going to be talking about that a huge amount this week. I did make a couple of little acquisitions and um, some stash enhancements, but I've decided to pop those onto next week's episode um, because I have some other things that I want to talk about this week. Um, but it was a lovely festival. Um, it was really fun and it was just lovely to be able to spend some time um, with Nikki and Amy and also some lovely, other lovely, lovely, <laughs> other lovely individuals that I caught up with. Thank you so much to everybody who um, kind of came over and said hi um, and it was just lovely catching up with people, having chats, getting to know some new friends and yeah it was great as, as always is. Um, it feels bizarre to me that just a year ago I was visiting Fiber East with Mina and Vero that feels like five minutes ago, but um, but yeah, a whole year has gone by since then, and it's still a lovely festival. We had a lot of fun. But like I said, I'll be sharing some more bits and pieces about the festival um, Fibre East next week. The other big change that has happened over the past week is that I have started my new job, um, <laughs> which is kind of overwhelming, very exciting, but it's all been a little bit hectic inside number 23, as I'm sure you can appreciate. But regarding the new job, there's going to be more on that later in my general waffle segment, so stay tuned until the very end of the podcast if you'd like to hear me waffle on a little bit more in more detail about my new job. One more thing before we get started, I just wanted to mention we are currently, we, I, am hosting um, a cal for the podcast. It's the Harry Potter cal. It's a year-long knit-along, make-along, crochet-along, everything-along. Um, and I just wanted to remind you that entries for the... Uh, 
what month are we on? July. <laughs> the July part of that knit along will be closing this coming week. So get all of those entries in. I'll be drawing for a prize winner next week. Also, with regards to me sending out prizes, there has been a bit of a delay on that. So I can only apologise, but thank you so much for your patience in bearing with me while I get all of your goodies together. They will be winging their way to you via our owl post as soon as possible. One final thing, I know I just said that, but this is definitely the one final thing. I have the pleasure of announcing a giveaway winner this week. Yay! You lucky little badgers ended up having an extra week for this giveaway because I was not observant enough to draw for it last week. Um, and it is my Just Because You're Awesome giveaway that I did two episodes ago. Thank you so much to everybody who got involved. I think there were nearly 600 entries in the end, which is kind of overwhelming and incredible and awesome. And um, I locked down the thread and drew a winner at random this morning. And that winner was Laura, who is Little Lolly Knits. Her post was 186. And congratulations, Laura. If you can send me an email um, to Casey at inside number 23.com, I would really, really appreciate it with all of your details so that I can send that um, off to you as soon as possible. And just congratulations. I really, really loved Laura's post as well. Um, she shared her a gorgeous cockatiel, who I believe is called Kimmy, who is so, so sweet. Um, but congratulations, Laura. Like like I said, thank you to everybody who got involved in the giveaway and yeah, hopefully more giveaways will be on the horizon soon. So moving on guys, that really was the last thing before all of the kind of crafty goodness. Um, my first segment this week is not what am I wearing because I am not in fact wearing a me made ensemble today. <gasps> Shock horror. I mean, I'm kind of telling a pork pie. Um, Porky pies, lies, in, in case you don't know. Um, <laughs> because I am wearing a me made skirt, my Holly Burn skirt, my old favourite, but um, I'm actually wearing a t-shirt today that's a bit of a fandom t-shirt. In case you can't see that, it says, toxic masculinity ruins the party again. And at the top here, it says, my favourite murder. This is my first bit of My Favourite Murder merch. My Favourite Murder is one of my favourite audio podcasts of all time, and if you are at all into true crime, I very much recommend it, and I love this shirt. Emrys bought it for me as a present, and I just haven't wanted to take it off, so hence I'm wearing it for my podcast. One little disclaimer as well, if you're not into the kind of fruity language, so we say My Favourite Murder may not be for you, but if you're slightly more relaxed in terms of that type of thing, then I very, very, very much recommend it. So actually going on to some yarny kind of content, shall we? Um, I want to share a little bit of owl pose to start off with this week. <laughs> Um, I was very, very lucky to receive some really, really lovely parcels in the post this week. You can hear the crunching. The crunching is very, very good. I wanted to say a really huge thank you to Pam, who kindly sent me this glorious skein of Nora George yarn. I'm a huge fan of Tracy of Nora George, and this is actually one of her Harry Potter colorways. This is Forks, and I love it. It's gorgeous. It's all of the colors that I really, really love. Are all of the kind of autumnal, um, orangey gorgeousness with the kind of charcoal grey. I think it's lovely. So thank you so much, Pam. She also sent me a little parcel filled with some other goodies and it was just an absolute joy to open. So thank you so, so much. And I'm just sending you huge amounts of love. The second lovely parcel that arrived this week was from Chelsea of Darn Yarn MN. <laughs> And I'm sure that MN is a state in America, but I don't know what the initials stand for, so I'm just going to say Danyan MN for now. But I just want to say, Chelsea, thank you so much. She has got my number in terms of what she sent, believe me. Um, I'm going to show you what she sent me, first of all, but basically she produces these gorgeous, and I mean gorgeous, project bags. Um, and... She may or may not have sent me a half or puff one. <laughs> Isn't this just glorious? This is her label, Darn Yarn. It's got all this gorgeous half or puff print fabric on it. But very excitingly, this bag has a little secret at the back 
it has a lovely clear plastic panel so basically you can see the project that's inside it i would say that this project bag is probably the perfect size for a little pair of socks or mitts or like a one skein project it's absolutely gorgeous and like i said the the actual quality of the make is just flawless it's wonderful and i'm really excited to put something in here and be able to see it through the little window at the front so obviously hufflepuff i'm a proud hufflepuff so this one is for me yay um but she also was kind enough like i say to send one for the harry potter cow and this one is basically hogwarts themed because it has all of the houses slytherin hufflepuff ravenclaw and gryffindor and then it has just the regular black harry potter fabric on the back and again the um the little window in there and the thing that i love is that she's taken the time to make the inside of the bag just as beautiful as the outside because obviously having that window going all of the way through it you wouldn't want to see any kind of exposed seams and and bits and pieces like that so it's it's just beautiful so do head over to their website and check them out and send them some love uh, their etsy Etsy store is darnyarnmn.etsy.com and you can check them out as darnyarnmn on Instagram and like I said go and show them some love get yourself one of these project bags because they are gorgeous and these will be um well this one not my one because my one is for me this is going to be included in the Harry Potter cowl at some point later this year Next up on the agenda is what's on my needles and although I haven't done a huge amount of knitting this week I do have a couple of little bits to share with you. So both of these projects are living in my Harry Potter project bag from Maker's Haven. Love this bag so much um, and I put them both in here because I actually took them both to a Fibre East with me yesterday when I went and um, knitted on both but like I said haven't been able to do any since because of the old neck shoulder situation but I shared this project with you last week and I've made uh, I would say a relatively significant dent in it it is the I Heart Rainbows Jumper this is a pattern by Tin Can Knit and as you can see, I've now finished the little body of the little, of the gorgeous little children's sweater. It's so cute. So yeah, that's the body. I'd already completed the yoke when I shared this with you last week. It's adorable. And I have started knitting on the first sleeve. Basically, all I need to do now is to do both of the sleeves. Um, get a couple of little buttons um, to to have on the, the neckline here and just give it a good block so that it's ready um, to give to the person that it's for. Um, it is a surprise but I don't think that we're in much danger of that particular individual watching the podcast but just in case I'm not going to say who it's for um, and yeah I'm loving it just as much as always. It's a really fun knit, it's very simple, it's quite mindless and it's very good for handbag knitting because baby garments are so teeny tiny. Um, this is my first official baby garment so it's kind of insane how cute this is and how quickly it goes. When you do have the time and you are pain free and able to knit um, it does fly off the needles and I really really enjoyed working on it. The majority of the yarn, so the main colour yarn, is actually um, an acrylic base and I'm not used to working with acrylic. Um, I'm finding it a little bit um, of an odd experience um, in comparison to the, the kind of more uh, woolen blends that I usually use. But it's still really lovely, it's very soft, I think it's going to wear well for the baby. It's going to mean that this is um, super easy to kind of take care of and in terms of washing. And yeah, I'm just very, very happy with it. All of the other yarns um, involved in terms of the scrap yarns that I used for the colour work in the yoke um, are all super wash yarns as well. So they will all be able to go through the washing machine for the little baby if it kind of throws up on the jumper or anything like that as I've heard that babies are inclined to do but yeah it's been really fun it is um getting to the point where I do I'm, I'm getting the garment bug again probably because of all of the yarn that I have for garments so this is kind of feeding that need a little bit because although it's a very teeny little garment it's still a garment 
um, and it's very, very cute. I'd very much recommend the, the pattern, as I said last week. Tim Can Knits, all of their patterns are just marvellous. And the fun thing about this is that you can make, I believe, sweaters up to age four with it. Um, so all of your little kiddies could have these gorgeous little jumpers. The next and last work in progress that I've been working on this week is actually a new cast on. Now, I cast this on for a couple of different reasons. One, because I wanted something very, very brainless for commuter knitting. Um, my new job involves me having to commute by a train in and out of London, and for the past year and a half at my previous um, job, I have been driving to work. So I wanted some commuter knitting, but knitting on the train feels like a little bit of a foreign concept for me because it's been a while since I've done it on a regular basis. So I wanted to cast something on that was very simple that I wouldn't be too precious about because although um, the baby jumper is relatively simple at this point, I do want to make sure that it's perfect and I get a little bit concerned that I'm gonna drop stitches or do something wrong or uh, lose stitches when it's in my bag. So I thought I'm gonna cast on something simple and fun and I decided to try my hand at a sock head hat. Now, I've never actually knit a sock head hat before. I know it's a very, very popular pattern. It's popular because, and as you can tell by the name, it's as simple as knitting um, a pair of socks. Um, and it shows off yarn in much the same way as a pair of socks does. So if you have a single skein that you don't much feel like having on your feet, make a sock head hat, make a, you know, uh, a feature of it, wear it on your head instead of on your feet. But I have done so far this much. <laughs> it's a very, very small amount of hat. It's basically just ribbing so far. Um, and I cast this on just before Fiber East um, because that was the other reason that I wanted um, to cast this on is to have something uh, portable for Fiber East and something small and simple. Again, not going to be too precious about it. And yes, I have been working on the rib. It's just a two by two rib to start. I think you have to knit for something like four inches. And yeah, it's very, very cute. The yarn in my lovely cake here is particularly special, I think. I am very enamoured with this colourway. As you can see, it has a lot of natural, but with these little pops of hot pink interspersed with dark greens and blues and little bits of gold every so often. It really is a lovely, lovely colourway. And this was actually gifted to me by the Woolen Homestead. There is their label. The Woolen Homestead, little sheepy, hand dyed in Michigan, adorable. And as everyone knows, I'm a big Harry Potter fan, and this uh, is the Nymphadora Tonks colourway. And Tonks is one of my all-time favourite Harry Potter characters, so I just had to knit this up. I think it's going to be a really cute hat. Um, hopefully it will it will suit me. Um, I think it will. I think it will look fun. I'm envisioning um, a furry pom-pom on this one, as I did on my previous hat as well. And I just love it. It's their soft sock base, so it's a 75-25 Superwash Merino Nylon, and it's looking really fun in the rib. I really can't wait to see how this colourway knits up in the main body of the hat. Like I said, it's pretty much just stockinette all the way. Um, and yeah, I, I really want to be able to knit on this more. Um, unfortunately, I do think that doing the rib on this was what was making my neck feel a little bit sore again. The, the main problem that I'm having is if I'm using my left arm for anything at all, kind of repetitive movement seems to be what sets it off, um, which is why I've been doing a couple of other things that have been mostly using the right hand, but with a lot of kind of rest periods in between. And things that are just not too um, stressful on any part of my body. Although who knew, who knew that knitting was a stressful thing? <sighs> We'll see, we'll see. But yes, I'm very much enjoying that, my first ever sock head hat. And those are the current whips that have been given some time this week. Very sadly, I have not been able to work on the Oracle shawl at all because as soon as I've tried, it's been too uncomfortable to do. And I feel utterly 
awful about it as I'm test knitting the pattern, but I did just want to remind you that the pattern should be going live on August 1st, so please do get a copy of the Oracle Shawl if you've enjoyed seeing my progress of it, if you've enjoyed seeing the other test knitters progress. It is a beautiful project and I very, very, very much recommend that you get yourself a copy and knit one of your very own. Okay, next up is, excitingly, So What?, which is my sewing segment. Uh, with the kind of lack of knitting in my life, I wanted to get my garment kind of mojo going, so I decided to work a little bit on my Outfit Along project. Remember that, guys? Remember at the beginning of June where I said I'd totally be able to make a dress and also knit a cardigan over June and July? totally hasn't happened, has it? But, you know, we can always aim for the stars with these type of things. Let's keep reaching higher and trying to overachieve. I decided to spend a little bit of time working on my dress. Now, this dress is a pattern hack with a bodice from Gertie's Book for Better Sewing, combined with my favourite, well, one of my favourite skirts, the Hollyburn skirt. And I'm very, very happy with the progress so far. It is knocking at the door of being completed. It's not quite there yet but um, I'm very happy, like I said, with the progress. The bodice is almost completely done. I managed to put the skirt together um, relatively simply this week, um, and I pretty much just need to finalise the fitting, put in the zip, hem it, and it'll be finished. But here it is. <laughs> it's very difficult to show you this dress in a small amount of space, but it's adorable. This fabric, as I've said before, um, is a double gauze fabric which I purchased from M is for Make and it has these kind of irregular polka dots in all of these incredible neon colours. I absolutely love it and it was an, a dream to sew. It really, really was. It was such a pleasure. So this bodice, um, like I said, is from Gertie's Book for Better Sewing by Gretchen Hirsch. I very much recommend it. This bodice originally has a sweetheart neckline, but she talks you through the process to adapt it to turn it into a straight neckline, which is something that I really, really like. So it, ha it now has a straight neckline. Um, it also is fully lined and has a facing. Let me show you the inside. Those of you who saw the dress that I wore to my brother's wedding will recognise this lining fabric. This is some more of this kind of silk cotton blend that I had in stash and I think it looks just as pretty lining this polka dot fabric as it did lining the floral fabric of my dress um, that I wore to my brother's wedding. The thing that I love about these facings, which were self-drafted, and the process of dra drafting a facing and, and adding a lining to a bodice and all of that is actually given kind of step-by-step -step, um, instructions in Gertie's book for Better Sewing, one of the other reasons why you might be interested in buying it. But yes, there is my lining and I just love how professional that looks when you have the facing with the lining. It's such a nice finish. It's just gorgeous. I'm very happy with it. And in terms of the fit, it fits very, very well. Um, I did need to take it in a little bit at the side seams, which I have now done. Um, and I just need to alter it slightly at the back. The back is going to, to need a little bit of finagling when I pop the zip in. But I also have a skirt on it. I'm just gonna cover my face to show you. Here it is, the skirt, and if you can see in there, da, 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 if I can point to it, <laughs> there's a pocket! Because as everyone who makes their own clothes will know, a dress or a skirt is just not worth its weight in fabric. I don't know where I was going there, but it's just not worth it unless it's got pockets. And that's what I love about the Hollyburn skirt, is the fact that the pockets are built in. One thing that I did do with this pattern that I didn't do with the Hollyburn skirt originally when I made it is I interfaced the pocket pieces on the inside. So you can see this has interfacing um, just because um, my denim Hollyburn skirt that I made with my sew along, the pockets have stretched a little bit. And granted that's because denim is a stretch fabric by its nature, it does change shape, but double gauze does definitely have some movement in it. So I know that if I'm using those pockets a lot, they're gonna start becoming misshapen, which does interfere with the line of the dress. 
But yes, the skirt, as you can see here, this is where all of the kind of rough and ready bits are. The skirt is currently sewn onto the bodice. Um, all of these seams will be pressed up into the bodice and then the lining will be sewn over. So basically, this will all tuck up. I'll fold this over and slip stitch it in place along this seam and that basically encloses all of the raw edges and you get a really really lovely finish to all of your insides but I'm not going to do that until I have finished the fitting of this and got the zip into it but yeah I'm really happy with it it's kind of I think more of a party dress than I intended I had wanted it to be slightly more kind of day-to-day -day, and I do still think it could work as a day-to-day -day outfit just perhaps something that you wear to go out somewhere during the day <laughs> as opposed to just kind of rocking about in it on a regular basis but I think it's so pretty the other thing that I have been thinking about doing is stitching up a matching belt um, out of the same fabric. I do have a very, very pretty yellow vintage buckle that I think would look gorgeous with this as, as a belt. And I'm actually considering possibly putting together a little tutorial as to how to do that yourself if anyone is interested because the way that I make um, fabric belts for dresses in kind of matching fabric is I use um, some kind of old school techniques from one of my 1950s um, sewing books. So uh, it's a lot of handwork and it takes a little bit of time, but the finished object is beautiful. Um, so if that's something that any of you would be interested, I might see whether or not that's a little tutorial that I can whip up for you um, in the future at some point, as I'm going to be making one for this dress anyway. But yeah, I really, really love it. And it's just making me want to sew all the things. I can't wait to um, organise my life a little bit and have some designated sewing time because the one thing that I do desperately want to continue work on is my duffel coat which has been languishing for the longest time and I want to see if I can get it ready to wear at autumn so fingers crossed um, that would be really fun and that would be such a cool project to be able to share with you guys on the podcast but for now this is happening I'm very very happy with it and I'm just super inspired to so all the things, particularly because it doesn't give me any form of discomfort in my neck right now. My next and final segment before we move on to the more waffly end of this particular episode is actually a brand new segment for the podcast. Ooh, exciting! Um, one of the things that you may have seen if you check out my Instagram on a regular basis that I have been doing to kind of fill the crafty void in my life that was left by my lack of knitting over the past week is um, I picked up an old project that has been languishing for quite some time that is not knitting, that is not sewing, that it's nothing to do with garment making at all, which for me is very, very out of the ordinary, and that is cross stitch. Now, I used to cross stitch a huge amount when I was younger. Um, I always think of my crafty life as having a bit of um, a dark period regarding knitting, uh, where I pretty much didn't knit anything for probably between the ages of about 16, 17, um, till about age 21 or so. There was a little bit of a gap in there. <laughs> But um, during that time period, one thing that I did do consistently, consistently, my goodness, was cross stitch. I did a lot of um, very big, um, completely covered cross stitch um, during that time. One that I still currently have as a work in progress that I've literally been working on since I was doing my degree, which was nearly 10 years ago now. Yeah, it's it's been languishing for a long time. <laughs> but what I wanted to do, first of all, was to work on um, a particular cross stitch pattern that I've had for quite some time. Um, but after starting it initially, I just never kind of got back into the swing of it. So this little um, kind of deviation from knitting actually gave me a really good excuse to pick that up again, which was really fun. But I have affectionately named this new segment in the podcast, which I'm not sure how regular it will be because I think this is going to be a bit of a um, 
do it a lot and then stop for ages but in the meantime I'm calling it resting stitch face <laughs> because it makes me laugh <laughs> but I actually have two works in progress for resting stitch face this week the first of them is a project that, like I said, had been languishing for quite some time, um, but I have had it on the, on the linen, <laughs> the linen, I guess you would say, <laughs> on the needles, on the linen, um, since uh, the end of last year. And that is my Halloween Town cross stitch, which is by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. So this is how much work I have done so far. And I had only done one of these little pumpkin guys when I started doing this this week. So I've made quite a lot of progress on here. One thing that I do love is my little um, pumpkin spice latte uh, needle minder. I was going to say stitch minder then. Needle minder on the top there. And I'm really, really loving how, how this looks and working on it is so much fun. This is quite a large project. It's one of the um, the larger pieces that Frost and Pumpkin Stitchery do. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I've made a little dent in it. And I don't think it will be a huge amount of time before it's finished. Perhaps not in time for Halloween, if I'm honest. But I'm really, really liking it. And it's just giving me a really lovely flashback to a time when pretty much all I did um, in crafty times was, was cross stitch. Interestingly, this is my first ever cross stitch project, which is done on linen fabric. I have until this always used Ada for for my for my cross stitch. So basically, always used uh, the the more stiff version of this. Um, linen is a lot finer. I think it gives a really really lovely finish. I'm very happy using the linen, and I think that that's what I will use from now onwards. Uh, but yes, frost, Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, very well known for doing lots of kind of cutesy little samples and that type of thing. And I love their Halloween Town pattern. I think that it's adorable um, and I can't wait to kind of get into the other areas of this because it does have a little witch with a kind of gingerbread house and it has um, Frankenstein's monster and the Bride of Frankenstein. It's all very cutesy and very, very cute and cutesy and cute. The variation in my language is, is astounding this week, but yes, it's really, really lovely and it's helping me keep Halloween alive all year round, which is marvellous. But as I said, that is not the only work in progress I have for Resting Stitch Face because I actually started a new cross stitch just this morning. And the reason behind that was because you might think, why did you cast on, cast on, why did you start a new cross stitch project if you already had one on a hoop? And that was because um, last night, yesterday, I was at Fiber East with Amy and Nikki, and Amy actually stayed at our house last night, which was wonderful. We had such a lovely time, and we introduced her to Stranger Things, and I'm really, really hoping that she's gonna get addicted because I just love Stranger Things, and I want to pass that love around. But I ended up waking up really quite early this morning and I had left all of my whips in the room that Amy was actually staying in, which is our living room, and I couldn't get my hands on them. And I was desperate to do some cross stitch because, like I said, woke up with a slight twinge in the neck and I could have worked on some more knitting, but I didn't want to make that any worse than it already was. So I decided, why not cast on a new, I cast on, I keep saying cast on for cross stitch, which is not right, but you know what I mean, guys. <laughs> Why not start another cross stitch pattern? Because I actually have a few in reserve, very excitingly, because my plan is for my new office for Insight number 23, which if you haven't watched before, I'm in the process of redecorating one of our rooms to turn it into a lovely office space for the podcast where my computer is, and it's making me very, very happy. But I am starting to create a wall of kind of prints and artwork that I really love. And I thought it would be fun to have a little bit of cross stitch on that wall as well. Now I've been very particular as to the type of thing that I'm putting up on that wall. So the Halloween Town cross stitch, though gorgeous, I don't think will work in that space. And then I remembered from, I believe, Candice 
of um, pin feathers and pearls. Um, she showed a while ago um, a cross stitch pattern that she had bought from a company called Plastic Little Covers. And Plastic Little Covers does an incredible selection of really fun, modern, um, humorous cross stitch charts. Some of them are, again, using the more fruity language, so bear that in mind if you want to go and take a look at them, but some of them are just kind of a little bit more tongue-in-cheek, a lot of pop culture references, and um, I decided to take advantage of her buy three charts for seven pounds offer, and I popped three of her charts in my cart, and she emailed them through the same day, and I've been wanting to cast on a couple of those, cast on again, I've been wanting to start a couple of those for quite a while, so this felt like the perfect opportunity to do that. Uh, the one that I have started working on today has actually, I've done a lot of it already, I'm quite um, impressed with myself that I managed to do so much so quickly. Um, I'll pop a picture of the chart up on the screen. It says office, sweet office, with this beautiful kind of floral wreath, um, wreath, my goodness, around it. And so far, this is how much I have. So I have office sweet at the moment, which is very funny. Office sweet. And like my previous project, this is on linen. I believe it's 32 count linen. I have another little frosted pumpkin stitchery needle minder up here, but I've started in the most kind of simple area, so with the text. Um, and I was just doing this top corner, which is why it kind of cuts off here. But I think what I will do is continue with the letters um, and then have the final office before I start the, the flowers around. And I love it. Honestly, I'm so addicted to this right now. Um, I think for this, it really is both a process project and a product um, product project <laughs> because I really really am excited about having something like this to display um, on my wall in the office. I am I think just going to leave it in its little embroidery hoop when I hang it up. I'm possibly going to paint the hoop white uh, because all of the other frames are white in that room. But yeah, I love it. I think that the the, the colour choices that she uses for her patterns are really fun. There are lots of kind of bright pops of neon colour, which is exactly what I wanted. And it's just really, really cute. It's, it's quite um, a difference for me to be working on a project like this rather than garment knitting or um, kind of sock knitting as I have been recently, but it really is awakening in me, again, a love of a craft that has been on the back burner and to be honest, not even on any burner for too long. And I can't wait to see the finished project. So that's everything, you guys, in terms of the crafty content this week. Like I said, it's a little bit odd, a little bit off slightly, I guess, because of um, various things that have been going on this week. So let's move swiftly into general waffle. General waffle. And as I promised at the beginning of this episode, I'm going to be talking a little bit about my new job. Um, I started this week on Monday. Um, it was a bit of a culture shock um, going from my previous work environment to very much a nine to five job where I finally, for the first time in my working life, have weekends off. That is still kind of mind blowing to me. <laughs> Just that small detail was enough to rock my boat quite considerably. Um, but I, on my first day, had a chat with the lovely lady that I'm now working for and asked her whether or not it was okay for me to tell you guys officially that I am working with them. She gave me the okay and now I am very, very happy to be able to share with you guys that I am the newest member of the team at Tilly and the Buttons. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, I still don't believe it, to be perfectly honest, and it is kind of a dream come true, I'm not going to lie, because anyone who has watched my podcast for a while will know that I have been the biggest fan of Tilly and what she does with her patterns for just the longest, longest time. It's 
it's really really incredible and I'm so happy and I'm even more happy that I now get to share this news with you guys yay so yes I am working with Tilly at Tilly and the Buttons my official role title is office assistant um which basically means I help everybody out in the office um, with anything that they need and in particular I'm helping with processing orders and that type of thing so if you make any purchases through Tilly's website you're going to be going through me <laughs> but so far it has been a wonderful experience I am so pleased and excited to be working with a team of incredibly talented women um, who are incredibly inspirational. Um, I've already learned a lot. I have been physically and mentally drained every day that I've got home so far because it's a lot to absorb in a very, very different environment to where I was working previously. Uh, but it's all good. It's all very exciting and and yeah, fingers crossed it will be for, for the long haul. And yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it in terms of what I'm doing. So I hope you're excited, guys. I hope you're as excited as I am because I am over the moon. Um, but just know, I will continue to sing Tilly's praises on this podcast as I have always done because this was not something that's been in the offing for a very, very long time. It literally happened over the past three weeks or so. So always, I will be honest, but I've always loved Tilly's patterns. So just bear that in mind when I do sing their praises. It's not just because I'm now working with them. It's because I have always felt that way. <laughs> This does, however, bring me on to a couple of changes that are afoot regarding the podcast and Inside Number 23 and everything that we do here. <gasps> exciting! I think it's exciting. The biggest change that is going to be happening at Inside Number 23 is that I am changing my upload day. Ah, <gasps> shock horror! No! Always previously on the podcast, I record my episodes on a Sunday and I upload them on a Monday, which is fun because it's like start your week with inside number 23. But as I stated just a couple of minutes ago, for the first time in my life, I actually have weekends off and... I don't want to give up one of my days of my weekend, my two days off that I'm going to get every week, which is still completely blowing my mind. I don't want to use one of those days to podcast. I want to be able to enjoy my entire weekend without feeling like I am working on one of those days. Because although I love the podcast and I do it because it brings me huge amounts of happiness, it is a bit of a job because I spend a whole day filming and editing and uploading and making sure that this is ready for you on a Monday. So it doesn't feel like a day off. Basically, my new upload day is going to be changing from a Monday to a Friday. We are now gonna be uploading every Friday. So instead of starting your week with Inside Number 23, you'll be starting your weekend with Inside Number 23. Um, I know that you guys will be really understanding of that change. Um, if it upsets you for any reason, I'm very, very sorry about that, but this is the decision. It has been made, it's not changing. So if you enjoy the podcast, I'm hoping that you'll enjoy it regardless of what day of the week that it goes on. And to be perfectly honest if I'm uploading on a Friday you can always still watch it on a Monday if you really really want to you know nothing is stopping you but I'm excited um this job is going to open up some real um fun experiences for me and I'm hoping that alongside that within my personal time because I already feel happier and better in myself it's going to give me more inspiration to produce more content on here and to start a couple of side projects that have been ticking over for a little while which is all very exciting but yeah that's basically what is going on and um you can probably tell from my face I haven't stopped smiling in about two weeks I'm getting a little bit of um face ache maybe that's what did my neck in who knows who knows 
But yeah, guys, that is everything for this week's episode. I feel like it's a little bit shorter than normal, perhaps, but I am holding some things um, kind of back, like I said, in terms of stash enhancements and that type of thing, because there's going to be a much shorter gap between episodes this week. This is the last episode that's being uploaded on a Monday, and my next episode will be going live this coming Friday. So I didn't want to kind of give everything over in one go, because I have a much shorter space of time to produce content for the next episode so I hung on to a couple of bits and pieces but thank you so much for watching and your support of the podcast and your love and enthusiasm for everything we do here it means so much I cannot tell you if you've enjoyed the video please give us a thumbs up please hit subscribe down below um, to be kept up to date as to when I have new videos and new content on this channel which hopefully will be a little bit more in the near future I hope you all have an incredible couple of days because it's not even a week before I will see you next. I hope it's filled with happiness and sewing and knitting and all of the crafty things. I'm sending you so much love. I can't wait to speak to you all again soon. And yeah, have a good one, guys. Bye! I think we're good this week. <laughs>